so uh, she will continue with her discussion later and it's already time for the next session so as you all know the next session will be about digital resources for teaching learning and assessment types and uh, forms so uh, the uh, purpose of this session is to uh, orient you to various forms of digital resources and i will be demonstrating a lot of um, exemplar resources also so that you can understand what are the different types and what these types are uh, like and uh, in the later part of the workshop uh, you uh, will uh, get to know how to uh, create develop uh, many of these resources which will be uh, shown to you here as uh, types of digital resources so i am sharing my screen going on to my presentation and sharing my screen so that uh, we can start <clears throat> so i think my presentation is visible so let us start i'm making it full screen yeah. yes so uh, digital resources for teaching learning and assessment types and formats so uh, let us uh, first understand what do we mean by uh, digital resources what do we understand by digital resources so digital resources are e text video audio voice narration music sound effects images and graphics singly or in combination to create a fictional or non fictional media or multimedia narration so as you can see from the uh, uh, working definition ki what all are uh, considered as a digital resources so it can be an e text video which is available uh, in digital format which is available and shared through a, a digital platform audio voice narration music sound effect sound effects images and graphics so they can be uh, as singular uh, a single resource or a combination of uh, some of them uh, you will be uh, more clear when you watch uh, some examples so uh, just a moment my slides are not moving just wait for a moment yes so uh, these are <clears throat> different uh, forms of e content so you can see here uh, mind maps maps simulation audio video advertisement interactive media infographics photographs so i will stay on this slide slide for a while so that it gets registered what uh, list is there mind maps i will repeat maps simulation audio video advertisement interactive media infographics photographs so if you want me to explain any of uh, these resources what uh, is uh, not understood by you you can write in chat so uh, there are other forms in the uh, next slide so i will move on to the next slide in the meantime if you uh, um, are not understanding any of these forms what do i mean by any uh, uh, form of digital content please uh, feel free to write in uh, chat okay uh, infographics um, yeah dr prachi is with me so she will keep uh, she will keep a watch on uh, the chat and let me know what is the demand from the group एडिटिंग मोड में करना पड़ेगा क्या मैं एडिटिंग में भी बच गई या 
so <clears throat> other forms are animations cartoons slide shows timelines diagrams flow diagrams charts and graphs okay so uh, these are the different forms of digital content so we can also uh, call them e content animation cartoons slide shows timelines diagrams flow diagrams charts graphs uh, chat mein kya kya aaya hai can you tell me dr prachi timelines okay i am also watching infographics mind maps mm, okay infographics mind maps uh, simulation timelines okay theek hai so i will be actually demonstrating all these forms of digital resources as we progress further in the uh, timeline so here you can see a mind map this is a mind map so you people have also asked what is the mind map there are mind mapping softwares also using which you can create such mind maps so uh, uh, the mind uh, the purpose of using mind maps are why we use mind maps to have a fair enough um, idea of a concept which we are uh, going to teach which we have planned to teach so it can be used as uh, the as a plan of teaching a particular concept it can be used as a plan also and it can be used as a culminating activity also you can give to create mind maps as an assignment also to the group or you can create a mind map and you can use it to unfold your uh, lesson like here in this uh, uh, slide uh, you can see a mind map on common food groups so here you can see how the, the, the this is not developed by me but whosoever has developed this uh, mind map so he has grouped the common foods like dairy meat confectionery water water means liquid uh, vegetable fruits grains beans and uh, legumes so uh, uh, that is how uh um, uh the creator of this mind map has grouped common foods so what then what comes under vegetables what comes under fruits what comes under grapes the grains beans and legumes what comes under fluids what comes under uh confections what comes under meat what comes under dairy so here you can see water is written the person who has created this may may be a child water so it the liquids would have been a better term so it is uh, how i project my mind to uh, just elaborate a content a, a concept or to sum up a concept so we can use uh, the mind maps to elaboration also elaboration of a concept we can also use it as the planning of our lesson and we can also use it a uh, post lesson to culminate the, uh, uh, the the learning which we acquired so i think uh, the uh, concept of mind map is clear to you people so there are several so software one software will be demonstrated also in the uh, days to come so i create my my mind maps using free mind and free plane so these are the two softwares which i use so we will be demonstrating you one software not necessarily out of these two but uh, it may be some other software also whatever the resource person uh, plans to demonstrate and you can have also have hands on on that particular software and you can also explore a free mind and free plane uh, dr prachi keep writing the uh, name of the soft uh, software in the uh, chat box mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> so uh, let me now uh, show you a flow diagram it can also be called infographics so some of the contents uh, can uh, are uh, the, the the names are overlapping or the nature is overlapping so this is the infographic of a family tree but uh, because it is in the form of a flow diagram we can also treat it as a flow diagram 
infographics are basically a uh, graphics uh, uh, a content where use of graphic and information is combined so you also know um, uh, one uh, e content as posters so when we use posters poster is something where very little text should be there and the image which is there in the text uh, should be capable enough to uh, project the idea which is uh, uh, which has been planned to disseminate through a poster but in an infographic uh, a combination of graphics and information uh, would be there which is not the case in case of posters uh, sometimes in poster you just won't have any text and the picture itself conveys a lot so uh, is it visible mm, just a moment So uh, uh, this is uh, the infographic. It is uh, based on a learning outcome of foundational literacy and numeracy. And the subject is EVS. And the learning outcome is the learner identifies relationships with and among family member. So here you can see three family trees, Rani's family tree. Then, uh, you have Shalini's family tree, then you have Raju's family tree. So why three family trees, I will tell you later. So because these uh, family trees are in the form of a flow diagram, so we can also treat it as a flow diagram and also as infographic because graphics, it is a combination of graphics and um, information. So here you can see Rani's family tree where uh, uh, Dada Dadi and Nana Nani, Rani's Dada Dadi and Nana Nani are uh, depicted and their offsprings are also depicted like um, uh, Bua and uh, her husband Fufa and their offspring. Then Rani's mummy Papa and she as their offspring and uh, her brother as uh, the offspring. Then uh, we can come on to Nana Nani. So mother is the offspring of Nana Nani. Mama is the offspring of Nana Nani. Man mommy is uh, mama's spouse and then cousin. So maybe in your own regional languages, you might be calling these relations by some other name. So it is quite likely. So you can see here Rani's family tree, then uh, Raju's family tree and Shalini's family uh, tree. So three family trees are there. So whenever we develop uh, digital content, we have to adhere to certain norms which are given in our constitution. So in our constitution, small family norm is uh, one of the norm which need to be added to. So that is why uh, these uh, three family trees have been created to add to the small family norm. If I would have created only one family tree, all the relationships in uh, a family couldn't be depicted. So to show different uh, relationships, uh, younger younger brother of uh, uh, Shalini's or, or any of these three characters, younger brother and elder brother uh, of uh, the, the younger child uh, the, the, uh, of Dada Dadi, Nana Nani. So to show different relationships, uh, relationships with, with elder brother, what we call Papa's elder brother, what we call Papa's younger brother, what we call Papa's sister, and like that in the maternal family also. 
So if I would have depicted all the relationships, so I would not have adhered to a small family now. That is why three family trees are created uh, here. So now you might have understood mm -hmm. what an infographic and what an um, uh, um, flow diagram is. So let me move on to uh, another one. Yeah. yeah. So this is an example of diagram. So here you can see the process of waterfall formation. So uh, the uh, landforms are something which are developed or created by nature in a span of uh, uh, centuries. So it is very, very difficult to explain a phenomena which occurs in century. We takes centuries to occur. So with the help of digital contents, with the help of a diagram or with the help of short animation, we can explain such complex phenomena, uh, which are otherwise very difficult to explain, especially to uh, children living in geographical location, which uh, where there uh, is not presence of any particular form of uh, a landform. Like waterfall is not everywhere in India. Plateaus are not there everywhere in India. Mountains are not there uh, everywhere in India, but we have a geographical diversity. We have all these landforms in our uh, country. So to explain a phenomena like that, abstract phenomena like that, a small animation, uh, and a diagram is most suitable digital content. So here in this diagram, uh, you can see the process of waterfall formation and it has been, uh, it, it's a labeled diagram. So here you can see a hard rock, then soft rock and water flowing over a hard rock. So when water flows over a hard rock, a hard rock and it touches soft rock, the undercutting uh, in soft rock is very, very rapid. So it uh, just decays rapidly. And over a period of time, there is a, a platform of hard rock created. So when uh, the pressure of water is uh, hard on a hard rock, so it gets broken also. That is why you see a lot of broken stones beneath a waterfall, if you have seen a waterfall. So here uh, you can see uh, the uh, process. Waterfall retreats upstream, then over, uh, uh, over and collapses, overhang collapses, then uh, steep gorge-like valleys, then uh, plunk pool develops. So that is how waterfall is created. This is the process. So with the help of a diagram, such abstract phenomena can be explained in a very uh, limited time and also uh, in a comprehensible manner. If you Google uh, waterfall formation animation, you will get a 30 second or one minute videos any, animations which uh, explain this concept in a more interesting manner. So a diagram is also suit, suitable for explaining such phenomena and sometimes uh, to visualize it, uh, we uh, can also use uh, animations. Then uh, this is an example of timeline. You have also written in your chat um, uh, uh, to explain me timeline. Where, uh, uh, whenever there is a chronology which need to be uh, shown, which need to be uh, taught to children or adults also, so we can use a timeline because uh, we can have that visual of the time span or the 
chronology with the specific event occurred in a, a particular time frame so here you can see because you are adults um, adult learners so i have chosen uh, this particular timeline for you i have also chosen uh, I, I have actually chosen variety some are suitable for primary children some are suitable for uh, secondary senior secondary student and some uh, resources are suitable for adult learners like you so in this timeline policy directions and initiatives are uh, given as far as educational technology is concerned so here you can see starting from 1972 when et scheme was launched uh, we have covered up to 2020 but now in 2020 2021 also we have moved ahead in a lot uh, a few more initiatives so here you can see a time span starting from 1972 to 20 you know 2020 uh, when inset was launched class project was launched nep 1986 were launched and what were the provisions in nep 2020 as far as ed education technology is concerned then uh, the program of action of 19 uh, uh, nep uh, 1986 was launched in 1992 then ict at school scheme and national mission of uh, education in ict for higher education was launched in 2004 then in 2010 ict scheme was revised and ict awards were introduced do some of you um, in the group i can see our ict awardees also then uh, ict uh, policy came being in an uh, 2012 then in 2013 noer and ict curriculum were launched in 2015 digital india campaign was launched and uh, as part of it e patshala and e pg patshala were launched in 2017 swayam moocs were launched swayam prabha dtk channels and deeksha were launched in 2018 samagra shiksha as a uh, mission was started cyber safety and security guidelines for school education were developed in 2019 guidelines for development of e contents for school and teacher education were developed and launched then in 2020 nep 2020 was given away to the country and digital education guidelines and pm e vidya initiative was launched so here with the help of timeline if you give this information without any visual it will get uh, difficult to register it into the minds of the learner but if we have this uh, particular timeline so it gives a visual representation of the chronology so it is uh, easier or interesting to uh, grasp and also visualize the uh, changes made over a chronological uh, period <clears throat> i'm finding difficulty in moving my slides कार्टून so here you can see this is uh, uh, the scene of a jungle and there is a photograph hanged on a tree uh, depicting a dinosaur with a label on top missing and at the bottom it says since a billion years so te to teach the complex phenomena like uh, extinction of different species this cartoon can be a better warm up 
exercise showing this cartoon is good enough to warm up the class to start a lesson on uh, the uh, darwin also or uh, to how uh, species are uh, get extincted from uh, the uh, ecosystem so uh, to make the lesson interesting to get the attention grab the attention of students and sometimes to make complex difficult phenomena uh, start in a lighter manner we can use uh, cartoons so in ncrt's uh, social and political life textbooks and political science textbooks you can see a lot of cartoon on some complex political phenomena which otherwise are very difficult to um, explain also and difficult to visualize also but if we use cartoons uh, published in that particular era and we use them uh, in present time to teach what uh, happened in past cartoons are uh, the best way to uh, teach that so here the cartoon has been used for teaching a phenomena of science also so <clears throat> this is the example <clears throat> i'm uh, side by side i am also watching the text uh, uh, do we have any software for uh, cartoons yeah there are so i will be telling you writing when i uh, remember i will uh, write it you cannot uh, in uh, one of the software you can use already uh, posted images and you can also use your images and create uh, such cartoons video to off here that is then to it is getting hanged so this is an example of comic strip in the previous slide we had a cartoon and in this one we have a comic strip example of a comic strip so comic strips can be created using powerpoint also so if you uh, create your uh, comic strips and then you place them in a powerpoint software just link some audio with it, with it if you want to have audio also and save it as video you will get uh, an output of such comic strips so this is uh, how to kill acidity about acidity so you can see uh, here two uh, children talking uh, here yeah, i am feeling burning sensation in my stomach then girl says i think you are suffering from acidity boy says acidity so then girl says yes if you have excess of acid in your stomach you may feel burning uh, sensation so you can stop it also stop a comic strip but here i have a set some time after that the slide will change so uh, to uh, make the student understand the concept of acidity and why uh, our stomach doesn't get damaged by the acid that we have in our stomach so that phenomena has also been explained here that we have epithelial cells in our stomach and it uh, produces uh, mucus which covers the uh, internal wall of our stomach to keep it safe from the uh, acid from the, uh, so that is how uh, even though acid is there at acid is formed in our stomach but our stom wall of our stomach are protected and what is the easier and quick way to combat acidity has been shown here so she suggest him to uh, have a glass of milk to get relief from the acidity so in a very quick manner the concept of acidity and uh, how stomach is protected from acid is depicted here in this particular comic strip 
so you can uh, use comic strip to teach a lot of uh, phenomena in an interesting manner so you also asked about simulation this is a very uh, uh, interesting or small example of uh, a uh, very simple example of simulation so how digestion occur in amoeba has been depicted here so you can see uh, through this simulation the process of digestion that occurs in the single cell organism and that is amoeba so there are several other examples of uh, simulation simulation is something which creates or portrays a near to real image or uh, the process of something which is very very abstract though it is not real but some things we can show real if you want to teach your student different types of leaves barks shapes of leaves you can take them into the school garden and you can show them actual leaves actual barks and uh, all such phenomena which are there in our surroundings but there are some concepts like earth is spherical you cannot show this phenomena to your children but you can show a near to real um, uh, uh, video or animation in the form of simulation to your children that earth is spherical how universe is like and uh, how uh, the uh, 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 what is the placement of solar system in the universe what are the different planets which moves around sun so all these phenomena you can uh, show uh, via so show through simulation so there are a lot of mobile apps also using which you can uh, show all these phenomena to your students you might have also visited planetoriums if you people have visited planetorium planetorium is also a simulated form of the universe that uh, can't be seen by uh, by 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 any lay person the astronauts who visit uh, uh, who uh, visit the universe who uh, they can also uh, see a very low very very less portion of the universe they can't just see the entire universe by one space travel so uh, to simulate what we see as a space travelers there are the planetoriums there are mobile apps and there are other forms of uh, simulations also simulation is a very broader term so ar vr augmented reality virtual reality and such small animated simulations all comes under the broad categories of uh, simulations the uh, uh, show which uh, are there in the planetoriums so all are simulations all falls in the category of simulations so uh, i think i have answered your question because you wanted me to explain uh, simulation so we will see uh, watch another example of uh, simulation which is uh, an augmented reality hmm. so uh, let us now watch another simulation so it is created uh, it has been taken from a website or an app called qr so qr can be installed as an uh, mobile app qr is a mobile app you can install it from uh, your play store and you can also visit the qr site where you will get sketches of some uh, phenomena some educational concepts and by scanning those uh, uh, sheets uh, through qr app you can get a 3d image of that uh, particular phenomena so here i am depicting uh, a um, volcanic eruption let me share my uh, sound also
let us watch this so this is a sheet it is being scanned uh, through a mobile app called qr So, uh, so uh, here in the previous slide, you have seen uh, the simulation of a volcanic eruption. It is not very easy to show volcanic, uh, it is impossible actually to show volcanic eruption to your students, but such concepts are always there in the uh, school curriculum. So uh, all uh, those uh, concepts uh, which are not possible to uh, or difficult to explain uh, verbally or through diagram, where 3D visualization is very, very essential can be uh, taught using uh, simulations. So that is the utility of simulation as a digital content. So uh, in NCRT's class 9th and 10th textbooks, uh, science textbooks, there are a lot of uh, content which need, uh, or di uh, diagrams which need a 3D visualization. So uh, such uh, contents have been used in case, uh, created in case of NCRT textbooks also. And you, if you scan the diagrams of uh, those uh, uh, textbooks, class 9th and 10th science textbooks, you will get the experience of a simulation in the form of 3D visualization of all those uh, diagrams. You have to uh, install augmented reality uh, AR app, NCRT AR app. So uh, you uh, have to install it to get that experience in case of class 9th and 10th science textbooks. So uh, now uh, on the screen, you can see uh, the uh, a drawing. So we can call it an image also. So you can see a lot of kitchen utensils are hidden in that uh, 
picture so using this uh, simple uh, picture you can also engage your student in gamified learning by asking them to identify the utensils and in different uh, languages uh, these utensils are called by different names so like that a component of language will also be dealt with multilingualism and also uh, children will get to know the various uh, kitchen utensils so a similar image is there uh, for uh, sports and uh, play and sports articles also games and sports also so in this image you can see uh, a lot of uh, sports and play articles are hidden so using such images can uh, take your learners to n number of learning so you can uh, discuss uh, different uh, sports and plays your games you can also uh, discuss the play articles used in different games and sports you can also teach them the rules of different uh, uh, games and sports you can also uh, take them uh, to further learning by uh, telling them what are the different sports events which take place on national uh, state national and international level and who are the winners in uh, those uh, sports events so like that and and if uh, some women uh, players have also uh, won in the um, sports and games so uh, like that you can uh, make your physical education class also very interesting when you want them to teach about allied phenomena which related which are related to health and physical education so uh, we can also use photographs photographs are another form of digital content if they are digitized uh, now a days we have digital cameras only we have digital cameras in our mobile also so whenever you go somewhere you visit some places just look for some uh, uh, capturing some photographs which you can create as learning uh, resources so here in this i have uh, created a video of some of the uh, photographs of uh, uh, birds and animals so that i can showcase uh, those uh, photographs here otherwise they are placed on uh, our repository so uh, these are uh, photographs which are taken from different bird and animal sanctuaries little research has been done uh, as to what is the name of particular animal and bird what is the uh, uh, scientific name what is the habitat of that animal or bird and what are the migratory habits if there are any migratory habits also so uh, please uh, watch this video so that you can get an understanding so this is a bigger picture of a um, bird called coppersmith barbet and in the next slide you will see the uh, research that uh, we have done alongside uh, name scientific name alternative name if we know the bird by some alternative uh, names also and habitat so this bird doesn't have it seems it doesn't have any migratory habit so uh, the uh, migratory habit has not been uh, written here then
to a digital resource. So we have seen photographs of birds and animals and how they have been created by little research in the form of uh, interesting uh, digital resources. So uh, such uh, um, digital resources can be created on historical monuments also and uh, on different artifacts which are uh, available in our surroundings in different states when we visit different uh, areas as travelers, as uh, uh, tourists. So we get a lot of such ingredients which can be created into the form of uh, a digital resource. We can see the art and craft of a particular area. We can also see flora and fauna. We can also uh, see <clears throat> monuments which are out there click photographs and can create digital resources out of all such uh, ingredients which uh, we are surrounded with. So uh, it is not very uh, difficult to uh, uh, create digital contents. We, we have to be a little vigilant and uh, just uh, a little creative to, and uh, a little uh, researcher we have to evoke in us to have a lot of digital contents, which are very simple to uh, make, very simple to be created. So let us move on to other, uh, another one. <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, an example of uh, animation, graphic based animation. So, I'm playing it. So, this is uh, based on the concept of road safety. Hi, friends. My name is Anjali. Let's talk about traffic signals. We all see traffic signals when we are on the road. What do you think these traffic signals are for? Traffic signals help everyone using the road to know when they have to stop, wait or go. There are three lights of different colors in The traffic signal. Sorry. These are. My name is Anjali. Let me play Let's from talk the about traffic signals. We all see traffic signals when we are on the road. What do you think these traffic signals are for? Traffic signals help everyone using the road to know when they have to stop, wait, or go. There are three lights of different colors in the traffic signal. These are red, amber or yellow and green. Each color has a special meaning. For drivers, red light means stop your vehicle. Amber light means wait and green light means go. Pedestrians must only cross a road when the traffic signal is red. This is the time when vehicles have stopped to let people safely cross a road. Sometimes we see the figure of a man on the traffic signal. This signal is for pedestrians. When this man turns green, it means we can safely cross the road from the zebra crossing. When the man turns flashing green or red, 
We must wait until the man turns green again. We must always cross the road with an adult and we must hold their hand while on the road. So friends, always remember, safety first. Bye. Hi. So uh, this was uh, a graphic based digital content where little animation was there, where eyes uh, of the child were rolling, some vehicles were moving on the road, lights were turning red or green. So little graphics with little animations were uh, there. So uh, such uh, animations are very, very useful uh, for evoking uh, students' interest in a phenomena like uh, road safety, because it is also an important concern. We as NCRT also keep receiving such demands that uh, the idea of road safety can also be integrated. Uh, in the uh, curriculum. And there are um, road safety components in uh, the curriculum uh, of uh, younger children also and uh, some uh, and also in case of elder children. So uh, because uh, they, they are uh, commuters, students are also uh, commuters who commute on road. They use road, they use vehicles. So they need uh, to know the uh, uh, safety components when they are uh, moving on road. So instead of reaching them, if we can use such uh, simple cartoons or we can also call it animation to make children aware about safety concerns. So it uh, becomes interesting for them to understand all these phenomena. So next one is uh, interactive. So again, uh, we have created some interactive content. I have created a video so that I can showcase you a variety of interactive digital content. So these digital interactive contents are created using a software called H5P. And you will be having a complete session a full session on uh, H5P content creation. And I believe that you will enjoy uh, that uh, particular session where you can create uh, such content, which I'm just uh, showcasing here. कर बोल तराजू पर रखे हुए सामान को तोलने के लिए उतने भार के बाट को तराजू के दूसरे पलड़े पर रखें दोबारा प्रयास दो सम ऑफ देम आर इन हिंदी द वॉइस ओवर इज इन हिंदी बट बाय वाचिंग द कंटेंट यू विल गेट टू नो व्हाट कांसेप्ट इज बीइंग डिपिक्टेड हियर करें बहुत अच्छे अरेंज नंबर्स ऑन दी लेडर इन असेंडिंग एंड डिसेंडिंग ऑर्डर वेल डन Well done. Well done. Oops, try again. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Identify the occupation. Write the name of occupation in the blank space.
well done. देखें और पहचाने क्लू को पहचान कर सही विकल्प पर क्लिक करें शांग नाम की यह सभ्यता पीली नदी घाटी के आसपास विकसित हुई यहाँ के लोगों ने लेखन रेशम के कपड़े ईट मिट्टी और लकड़ी के भवन बनाने की शुरुआत की बहुत अच्छे चूचू करती आई चिड़िया जल्दी नाम बताओ भैया पक्षियों के सही नाम को पहचाने बहुत अच्छे so uh, we have seen interactive contents uh, here by uh, using they have been created by using uh, h5p h uh, alphabet five numeral and p uh, alphabet so h5p is the software using which they have been created and you will have a separate session on uh, h5p so it has a lot of possibilities you can use drag drop option to gamify assessment or to gamify uh, learning you have image hotspot you have uh, several other options also where students uh, can write there and uh, then they can uh, get a right or wrong answers it also gives us feedback please mute your or mute your audio mute, mute yourself there is a disturbance which is uh, coming from the background please mute so uh, this was the uh, yeah uh, this was about in uh, this uh, yeah interactive content and uh, yes i am getting uh, some questions over here do uh, we have uh, apps which can be used for creating animation so yes there are apps and you will be having a full session on uh, that uh, mobile app it is called a uh, stop motion studio so stop motion is uh, one form of uh, uh, animation so there are a lot of uh, different forms of animations you will be having a session on different forms of animations also and you will be getting a demo on stop motion studio so using which you can create small small animation on your own so you have also asked how to create comic strip for that you have to have some drawings and the uh, concept to be depicted through uh, this um, a uh, comic strip and using uh, the comic strip you can uh, uh, yeah yeah you comic strip can be created i already mentioned it comic strips can be created using powerpoint software also if you place uh, the uh, comics the graphics created by you on slide with thought bubbles and dialogue written on it you can set time Uh, after uh, which you need you want your slide to be changed and save it as video you can uh, create use uh, uh, comic strip using uh, powerpoint also powerpoint 13 uh, has this possibility has this feature to uh, create comic strips or any video also you can save any uh, of your content as video so it will be uh, played so uh, so that was th these were uh, different forms of digital content i would also like to show you an example of stop motion animation so that when you have that session you can relate uh, yourself to it 
So let me show one stop motion animation as well. Just a moment. So this is an example of stop motion animation where uh, the discovery of fire, discovery of fire has uh, been depicted. So you can see how fire was depicted uh, in uh, the prehistoric period, which is uh, the discovery of fire is one of the early discoveries and invention, which uh, uh, change the uh, course of human uh, development, course of development of human civilization. So let us watch this. So uh, you have uh, seen here in this stop motion animation how to uh, how uh, discovery of uh, fire happened. So which is one of the earliest discoveries and invention. Two other being uh, discovery of um, uh, agriculture and uh, invention of wheels. So there is a difference between discovery and invention. Also, discovery is something which already exists but uh, we discover it and make use of it. And invention is something which is invented, uh, like uh, invention of wheel. Wheel wasn't there in, uh, the, in, uh, in, in our surroundings, but wheel was invented. Fire was discovered. And like that, agriculture was also, a human learned how to, uh, how, how to irrigate or how to uh, do agriculture. 
so plants were already growing they were in nature but human didn't knew how to grow plants so when incidentally they came to know how plant can be uh, grown so then they just discovered that they can grow a plant they can grow trees uh, which already exist in the surrounding and they can plant it in other surroundings also so these three discovery and invention by showing these videos so any digital content we also need to understand that any digital content is not complete in itself for learning to take place we need to because otherwise there uh, won't be any role of teachers if if digital contents are sufficient enough to uh, uh, teach a student so why there, there is a requirement of teacher so teacher have to pedagogically structure any digital resource so that they can explain the concept better by using digital content like this animation on discovery of fire is complete in itself but it, it can take our learners to n number of learnings we can all we can discuss with them how discovery of fire make life of human being easier when they were living in caves and they were scared of learning uh, they, they scared of uh, um, wild animals fire protected them from uh, wild animals they also learned cooking using uh, fire incidentally they learned cooking also that if we cook meat it gets softer and they started cooking uh, their uh, meals and we'll uh, make the pace of the development of human civilization very faster because now human beings can move from one place to another and a lot of societal development happened because of the discovery of wheel uh, they uh, started uh, this uh, uh, trading also because now they can move from one place to another place then specialization of uh, a labor also happened one uh, one group of people is specialized in one kind of economic activity like pottery and they can always sell their uh, pots to another village so one uh, uh, area is good in growing one kind of crop and they can always sell their crop uh, to another part of it earlier they were using barter system also so using such uh, 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 phenomena such digital content we can uh, discuss a lot many uh, complex phenomena concept uh, complex concept so but it just gives us a trigger point to uh, take us to uh, complex forms of learning when we use uh, digital contents so uh, so uh, when we are using digital content uh, in a classroom plan so how do we use it we can make use of a digital content pre lesson mid lesson and post lesson it is entirely up to a teacher how she uh, creates develops her lesson plan and uh, use a particular digital content pre lesson mid lesson or post lesson like i uh, mentioned about uh, um, Uh, uh about a content which i showcased here that we can uh, use a mind map when i was discussing mind map we can use a mind map a pre lesson also and we can also uh, use it to culminate the learning which occurred so we can uh, create if we have a smart board uh, a digital board in the classroom or uh, the laptops and computer connected to a big, big screen Uh, we can create such mind maps there and then uh, that is very very simple to create so it can be used pre lesson also it can be used post lesson also it can be used to unfold your lesson also in a gradual uh, manner then uh, we can also use digital content mid lesson there are a lot of app one is a bio digital human where complex simulation phenomena on uh, uh, some a uh, simulation on some complex phenomena are given 
uh, which is not uh, complex, I must say, but uh, difficult uh, for children to visualize, like our internal organs, like respiratory systems and the organs involved in it, digestive system and the organs involved in it. If we have simulations on such phenomena, such, such concept, we can use them mid-lesson. Uh, then we can also make use of digital content post-lesson when we have already uh, taught a concept using some digital content, but at the end of the lesson, uh, we can give uh, them to explore more uh, contents uh, in the form of videos, in the form of movies, so that they uh, get better understanding of a particular concept, a particular idea or a particular phenomena. Post-lesson use of resources is very, very important in subject like history. Because if you want to, uh, them to get oriented to the feel of a particular era, a particular period, or a particular event which occurred in past, showing uh, the lesson, uh, the, uh, that particular video as mid-lesson will not... Uh, serve the purpose as uh, it will serve uh, using it pre-lesson or post-lesson because students can watch the video on their own and when they come in the class they can discuss whatever they have watched in the video or uh, post-lesson also it can be given you have taught the phenomena in totality and now you want student to watch a movie or watch a video program based on it there are a lot of series which are there, historical series which are there on uh, YouTube, uh, like uh, Bharat Ki Koj uh, uh, and uh, some other such uh, movies. So they can be taught to students. We can also use digital resources in uh, flipped learning to uh, uh, practice flipped learning because it saves time. Uh, flipped learning is uh, that where we flip whatever we do in the classroom to for students to uh, uh, learn on their own or watch on their own. We can use uh, some uh, our own recorded video also. Uh, we can also uh, uh, share with them some digital content. They watch it maybe on their mobile or on their computer or laptop. And when they come in an online situation with you, they can uh, discuss whatever uh, questions uh, arise in their mind by watching the video. So like that, we can save uh, classroom time also. Uh, we can also uh, have much better and fruitful classroom interaction if we have flipped learning. During the time of pandemic, you uh, people might have... Uh, uh, might be having online classes, but online having online classes doesn't mean that you have to recreate the physical classroom online, eight hours or six hour classroom. So it should be a blend of online and offline activities. So you can share digital content with your students. Uh, they can watch it and when they come uh, in a situation where they get an opportunity to talk to their uh, teacher. So they, the time must be utilized to answer uh, their uh, questions. So uh, that is how digital resources can be used in the classroom. You will have a complete session on uh, it uh, by Dr. Angel on ICT content pedagogy integration. So you will better uh, know how to make use of digital content to make your classroom more lively and uh, fruitful. So that's all from my side. So uh, let me see if there are any questions. So some of you are already answering your question that is called peer learning. So peers are answering questions. So somebody has uh, written uh, PowerPoint Microsoft 19 uh, can be used for creating uh, uh, the, the any uh, 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 comic strips or videos. So uh, that is how uh, we learn from each other's uh, experiences. So uh, are there any more questions? If Dr. Monica or Dr. Prachi can uh, tell me. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, so if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. We will okay, ask you. You can write it in uh, the chat yes. box also. Yes, you can write so in the chat box. Some questions I have already taken through chat box. Uh, well, Najma ma'am, uh, we will post the video soon on the page which I demonstrated in the morning. Uh, it is on CIT website. So don't worry, all the sessions recordings will be posted uh, there along with the presentations. A few participants are already acquainted to stop motion animation, so they have started sharing their resources also here. Oh, okay. Good, good. <laughs> And some of them are writing that they have used uh, uh, QWER in their uh, NISTA sessions. That's very good. Is there any animation tool available in Diksha? No, there is no avail uh, animation tool available on Diksha. Uh, then there, we have is, is it possible animation tool where you can uh, using which you can create quizzes. So that possibility is there. Is it possible to make all these videos through mobile only? Uh, all, uh, not all, uh, but yes, uh, uh, some videos you can create uh, create using your mobile also because in the latest uh, uh, smart uh, phone devices, there is a possibility of create videos also with little music. So uh, yeah, you can uh, you can do it but not very high uh, definition or the way you uh, want to create them. Uh, stop motion can be created, but it again depends upon uh, how uh, good you are in drawing. So, uh, because it requires a development of graphics also, development of graphics also, but yes, you can do it. Uh, is there any force with the help of children also if they can draw uh, in your class some children can draw well so you can use their drawing to create uh, stop motion animations there's a question uh, is there any force tool on animation kind master somebody has written a kind master app for making videos using mobile so your uh, answer uh, up here, learning is already happening here. Ma'am, for animation, there is a tool which is Blender for animation, hmm. uh, which we can also integrate with store, with uh, with the open shot video editor, which we will be going uh, through during the session. For video editing also, you will be demonstrated a software open shot video editor. Blender, you can try for creating animations. Otherwise, open stop motion tunes. animation. Creators. Somebody has written open tunes. So write all these uh, softwares in the group as well so that we can have the names of softwares and tools at one place. Open tunes, somebody has written. Uh, Jagdishwar Reddy has written open tunes. So Blender, I don't know on mobile, but the Blender is the software and uh, it is slightly complex. Yes, it is a very near to professional one uh, with a lot of technical things, of course. That is why in the orientation, we don't keep such difficult ones so that you don't face uh, in the online mode specifically that much difficulty, but you can try on your own. Ma'am, a question here regarding Diksha. Can we insert external web links in Diksha interactive contents? No, we cannot. No. We cannot insert external web links. Any more questions? Madam, can we add our videos for which we made for, for our classes and uh, the videos which are in uh, YouTube? Can we add them? Uh, yes, you can add them. Uh, uh, how many videos you have? Who has asked this question? I'm Arish from Karnataka. Okay. So how many videos you have? Madam, uh, I made more than, uh, two, more than 150 or 200 videos are there in my YouTube channel. Okay. Can, we, can I add them to 
Diksha Madam, because I. Uh, but not uh, YouTube links can be can't be given. You have to submit them as standalone videos, standalone resources. Then only they can be uploaded on Diksha. Okay. So you might be having them as standalone resources also. Do you have them? Yeah, yeah, I have them. Okay, if you have them, so do share the resources with us. So it will undergo a review process, undergo an evaluation process, and. Uh, if they are found suitable, uh, we can create a, a project for you under uh, Vidya Dan. So there is a possibility on uh, Diksha, there is uh, an initiative, Vidya Dan initiative. So a project will be created for you and you can upload uh, your videos yourself and then they can be made live. We will share whatever videos are passed through the review process. If they pass through the review, review process, you can upload on your own. Yeah, okay. For that, we need to create a project for you. Okay, okay madam. Because uh, what I want to ask is, I have, means my channel name is Learn Easily. Okay. I started videos with uh, Learn Easily. Is it possible to upload or some uh, somebody said to me, we can upload a YouTube videos also in uh, Diksha. In the last year uh, for a content creator and all, they said. Uh, that is why I asked. Uh, no, no. We are not uh, um, having a link from the... Uh, YouTube, but standalone videos which are there, they may placed, they may be placed on YouTube also. They may um, remain there also, and we can also have them on Diksha. That possibility is there. Okay, madam. Parish sir, I have, uh, I wanted to add that kindly uh, when you are uploading on YouTube also, please choose the licenses properly, which we will be discussing today in one session. Okay. So uh, keep all the sources, uh, resources in uh, open uh, licenses. Uh, okay. Shahul, sir, you have any question? You have raised the hand. Hello. Hello. Yes, Mr. Shahul, uh, unmute to kar de. Hello. Yes, Girish, sir. Ma'am, Mr. Uh, any model is standard for different library? Sorry, I can't hear you, sir. <coughs> is there any model is standard? For a differently able student? Yeah, NCRT has developed e content development uh, guidelines. So they uh, uh, are in the form of two documents e content development guidelines, uh, which are generic, and there are e content development guidelines, which are specific to children with special needs. So you can go through those guidelines. I will uh, showcase those guidelines in my. Uh, session which I will be having on uh, fifth day on e content evaluation. But on CIT's website, you can see those guidelines. <laughs> and we also have a separate session on assistive technologies uh, using which we can help uh, children with special needs. <laughs> uh, Shahul, sir, now you may ask your question, please. Shahul, sir. Yes. Ma'am? Yes, please. Yes, Shahul. I already asked, ma'am. Uh, that is, uh, Adam discussed. Okay, because your hand is raised. <laughs> that is why we thought that you yeah. still have to ask something. Yeah. Girish, sir, you were also, yeah. you wanted to ask something, Girish, sir? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, madam, I also prepared several videos regarding our uh, syllabus. And uh, moreover, I have done the PPTs and the mind maps also regarding our concepts. Mm, is it possible to share that, Diksha, madam? Yes, you can share them. How, how, how madam? How? How many okay, mind maps you have? If you have more resources, then we yeah. create a project for you so that you can upload your resources on your own. We get mm -hmm. them reviewed and then we uh, make them live on the Shall We map them to the specific uh, uh, energized textbooks, uh, digital textbooks, and then they are there on the Iksha. If you have very few resources, you can directly you share with us like Ten mind maps. If you have, you can share. We will get them evaluated, and then my team can upload them. So okay. it depends okay. uh, the, the, on the number of resources that you have. 
Okay, madam. But mind maps, I have few, but videos and PPTs, I have many of them. Okay, so if we uh, uh, create a project for you, so mind map also you can uh, upload there. Okay, After okay. uploading, we will review and then give you a report, review report, so that you know how many of your resources have been found suitable uh, for upload. Okay, thank you. Uh, so now, Sanjay Kumar Rathor, sir, can you please uh, unmute and ask your question? Uh, by then, ma'am, there is a question in chat box. Uh, achha, you have answered. Okay. Uh, for mind maps and this thing. Uh, since, okay, no asking. So, ma'am, I think no more questions as such from the participants now. I thank you uh, for this wonderful session and provoking so many questions regarding the Diksha, this thing. And uh, we will be announcing it in between also if they have the query that they can join through with their dan if they have long, a long list of resources. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you to all the participants for joining in and listening to this session. Again, uh, a lot more uh, of their queries will be uh, addressed during days to come because you will be uh, getting an orientation to mind mapping softwares also. Yeah. Animations also. So, yeah. It is the first day, just a trigger to orient you to various resources. Okay, Dr. Right. Monica, can we close the session now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank we you can so also much. Have lunch. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'll just announce 